Hey designers, welcome back to another episode of How to Draw Cars. My name is Michael. Today we're gonna to do episode five of the Improve My Car Sketch series. And today's sports coupe comes to us from India. He's 16 years old and his name is Ronit. Thank you, Ronit, for sending in your sketch. Now this particular episode is going to be for those folks who are really struggling with making their designs look new. We're going to talk about Ronit's drawing, we're going to improve it, but what I really want to speak to is if you are a little bit more advanced in your drawing than say Ronit is, but your designs look old, they look dated, they don't look like the future, they don't look advanced. We're going to go through these steps in this video and I'm going to show you using proportions how to get your designs to look like the future. But before we get started, if you're struggling to take your design and drawing skills to the next level and watching disconnected videos here on YouTube isn't getting you there, check out my automotive design courses on Udemy. Udemy is an online learning platform where each lesson builds upon the next. So when you're done, you should see a serious improvement in your skills. If you like what I do here on YouTube, you'll love my automotive design courses on Udemy. The links are in the description. So let's talk about Ronit's sketch. We'll go over the good things first. And the first thing that I like to say about it is it gestures really well. It has a sort of laid back elegance that is a sort of classic proportion that a lot of sports coupes have. And I think that from a gestural standpoint, this car looks like a speed form in a sense that I don't know if he generated the design from a speed form, but it has that appearance. The other thing that's nice is the rear section is also, again, very elegant, the way it wraps in and, and completes the form, completes the volume across the space. The rear section, the lower part of the bumper, becomes the other side of the windshield. It also has the interior in it and included, which is really great. So let's talk about some of the things that we want to improve. The first thing that I noticed that jumped out at me is that the rear wheel is smaller than the front wheel. Unless you have a specific reason, you want to make your wheels the same size. The second thing, the wheelbase is too short. It's only two and a half wheels long. You want to have about three wheels between the front wheel and the rear wheel. And lastly, I want to go over the proportion. You have this very long front overhang and a very short rear overhang. But the front overhang really dates the design. This is something that we saw in the 70s and the 80s and into the 90s with cars and car design, and obviously Ronit being 16, he's probably not aware of that, I get that. So we have a car here that's sort of half in the past and half in the future. And the goal to improve this design and the sketch is to bring the whole design and push it out into the future 10, 15, 20 years. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna work with what's called the dash to axle ratio. If you know what that is, leave a comment in the comment section and let me know that you know what that means. So looking at Ronit's sketch, we've got two options. The first option is to keep the overall proportion of the vehicle the same, which is basically a two box design. And if you know what that means, let me know in the comments as well. The second option is to change it from a two box design into something else. So the first version that I did, I changed the dash to axle ratio, but I kept the overall silhouette of the vehicle the same. So we have the same gesture. The wheelbase has changed and the dash to axle ratio has changed. It looks more contemporary, but it doesn't look like the future. If, you're, if you want to be a car designer, you have to draw cars that are 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 years into the future. They already have, the companies already have designers who can draw cars that are current now, that are contemporary now. Your job is going to be to design what the future looks like. And so this first pass at Ronix redesign just looks like something that would be out right now. Let's push it even further and do a car of the future. So of course the first thing I'm gonna do is put in the three-wheeled wheelbase. This is key to getting the proportions right. Now what we're really talking about here is packaging. And there's a reason why cars from the 70s and 80s looked the way they did proportionally. And there's a reason why cars 
in the 90s and the 2000s looked the way they did. And there's going to be a reason why cars in the next 15 or 20 years are going to look the way they're going to look. And that is all about packaging. And if you want to know more about packaging and you want to know how this affects your designs, you should definitely come and study with me because this is the kind of hardcore design education you're going to get when we do a project together. And you're getting an understanding of these critical elements of automotive design. Okay, so here's the key to making this car look like the future. And that is the front overhang. So I'm going to make the front overhang relative to what Ronit had for his rear overhang. And these two compact overhangs are going to make the car look very futuristic. Why? Because there aren't a lot of cars out there right now that have this proportion. Now, one thing that Ronit did in his sketch that I didn't mention, if you look in the rear quarter in the sill area right here, he does this little kick up of the panel that is at the same angle as the rear fender haunch, the rear DLO, and the rear vent. And I thought, again, that was a pretty original part of the car. I, I you know, I've seen people sketch that a little bit before, but the fact that he lined all those elements up in such a nice way, um, that's pretty sophisticated design for a 16 year old. So congratulations for that. Good job. And again, I think that as you start to draw in all these elements and you see that the rhythm that they create across the form and across the surface adds a lot of dynamicism to the vehicle. Another area that Ronit did really well was to put the interior in his sketch, and so of course I'm going to do the same. He has a bit of ground reflection on his glass, and I would uh, encourage him to attack that even more in his sketching. Don't be afraid to put in some hard lines for your reflections. I'm sure you can start to see now the proportion difference between what Ronit drew originally and what I've done to improve not only the sketch, but also the design. And if you look at it, it's essentially the same theme. All of the elements that make up his design are there. So let's go over how we took a car that looked like it was from 30 years ago and turned it into a car that looks like it's from 30 years from now. So again, the big difference between Ronit's original sketch and what I've drawn here is the front overhang. And that makes all the difference. The proportions matter. All the elements are the same. The fastback roof, the DLO, the rear haunches, the lower vent, the kick up in front of the rear wheel, the tight rear overhang in the back. Everything is the same, except that front overhang is radically different. It matches what's going on in the rear. And now we have a car that no one's seen before. I did a quick color version and I would again encourage Ronin and anybody out there struggling with the newness of their designs. If their designs look dated, they don't look advanced enough. Play with the proportions, push things forward, and let me know in the comments what do you think about the results. As always, be sure to like and subscribe. Be sure to check out my courses on Udemy and if you'd like to get your drawing on the show, the email to send your sketches to is in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.